In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Hello again, everybody, and welcome today to our Mass for Wednesday, December 23rd. And so, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, as we see how the nativity of your Son, according to the flesh, draws near, we pray that to us, your unworthy servants, mercy may flow from your word, who chose to become flesh of the Virgin Mary and establish among us his dwelling, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And our reading today is taken from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And suddenly there will, there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who will endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in years gone by. Lo, I will send you Elijah the prophet, before the day of the Lord comes, the great and terrible day, to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with doom. The word of the Lord. Our response is, lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me, teach me your paths, guide me in your truth, and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Good and upright is the Lord, thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, he teaches the humble his way. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Alleluia, Alleluia. O King of all nations and keystone of the church, come and save man whom you formed from the dust. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, 
No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs, asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Our uh, first reading today is taken from, as I mentioned, the book of the prophet Malachi. And this is the last book of the Old Testament. And so it's appropriate that in the last book of the Old Testament, there would be a mention of sending my messenger, uh, the Lord God says, sending my, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me. And then, really, John the Baptist ultimately completes uh, the Old Testament, and then once the birth of Jesus comes, that is the person that the scriptures have foretold. Um, and particularly in our gospel today, we have the story of the birth of John the Baptist to Elizabeth and Zechariah. And Elizabeth was a woman <clears throat> along in years, and in her day, uh, for a woman not to be able to have a child would have been a source of great shame. And <clears throat> so it's not surprising then that uh, once she has this child that she and her neighbors and her friends, as it says, are rejoicing with her because then this source of shame has been taken away. And <clears throat> there's a number of stories in the scriptures like this of uh, older people having children unexpectedly. You know, here is, of course, a case. Samson in the Old Testament is another case. But there's always a sense with these births like this that there's something special about this child, that the Lord looks with favor on them. And so it's natural that, you know, all the people who heard of this story of John the Baptist's birth would be wondering what then this child will be. What is God calling this child to? And I think now, today, the end of the year, especially the end of this year, uh, it's appropriate for us to ask ourselves and to be honest with ourselves. Where do we really think God is calling us in our lives? He's, all call he's calling us to do something, regardless of the age we're at or whatever, right? Anybody, everybody can do something, and everybody has some life ahead of them, whether it's long or short. And God is calling us then to do something, and something in his service and to ask ourselves now, at this point, where we are in that call, and where, if our life and our conduct and the way we're doing things is putting us in line and in the path that God is calling us to, or if we need to change and to go a slightly different direction. But above all, today, in, honor, in light of uh, the people asking what John the Baptist will be, to ask ourselves, what shall we be, and what is the Lord calling us? Gabriel assured Mary that nothing will be impossible for God, so we have the confidence to bring our need before the Lord, no matter how difficult they seem to us. That the Holy Church may be obedient to the Father by trusting in God's promise of salvation, and for Pope Francis, who recently celebrated his birthday and the anniversary of his ordination to the priesthood, that he will be blessed with good health and fortitude, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And that all parties will work together for the good of all as the period of government transition begins, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the COVID pandemic, that God will heal the sick, strengthen the caregivers, and guide the distribution and administration of the vaccines, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our St. Mary family, may our faith be strengthened as we contemplate the words of the angel Gabriel, for nothing will be impossible for God. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. And for all those suffering with COVID-19, uh, for whom this Mass is being offered, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And good and gracious God, we ask you to hear our prayers and to grant them according to your will, through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, by which divine worship in its fullness has been inaugurated for us, be our perfect reconciliation with you, O Lord, that we may celebrate with minds made pure the nativity of our Redeemer, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence 
and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Blaise our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant your peace, O Lord, to those who have nourished with these heavenly gifts, that we may be ready with lighted lamps to meet your dearly beloved Son at his coming, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be 